Hello guys, before I start, uh, today's 1st of January 2021, so this is my first video in this year. Uh, I will post it on the 2nd, so just the second day. Uh, I just want to say you and wish you all the best in the following year, a lot of health, and that's the most important thing. I wish you more time to spend it with your dearest and more time to spend it on water. So let's start tying. Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to pay attention to one of the details that I've uh, seen recently that uh, actually many people are struggling with and that's thorax. Uh, of course, I will make a couple of, not a couple, of, I will make one fly just uh, to make the whole fly complete in one video. So, and I, may, uh, I will make a couple of thorax, a thorax is wrong ones and correct ones, in my opinion, of course, uh, on these bodies that I already prepared. So I'm not going to use all of them, just a couple. So uh, stick with me and let's see how to make a proper thorax with a lot less material and it will be more effective. So let's get into it. So this is size 14 hook, 3 millimeter bead, I think, or 3.5, not sure. Uh, I spilled them out so they're all mixed and I just picked up one. Uh, so I'm going to start uh, my tying with uh, let's say yellow thread. So let me just change the button. So yellow thread is UTC, beautiful thread, uh, very effective, uh, very nice. It's good for tries, it's good for nymphs and In this case, it's going to be a nymph. So I'll just start right behind the bead. Couple of wraps to secure it. Then cut the excess off. As for most of my nymphs, I will use Coque de Leon uh, for the tailing material. And for the tails, I mean, it's just align those tips and then take them. And as you can see, not every tip will be the same length from this side, but from this side they, they will be aligned. Measure your uh, tail length according to your preference. No straight rules but don't make it just like too long or if you make it extremely short then what's the purpose of it? So when you have, have it like this just remember to attach your ribs. For the ribbing material I will use again ultra thread Instead of this uh, 70 denier, this is going to be double the thickness, so it's 140. And I'll just use one strand, I won't double it. You can for sure, but not necessary. If you double it, the effect will be sort of like this. This is doubled strand. So I'm going to attach the thread. It's very important that you are using uh, materials that are not frayed. Uh, so if any of these fibers went out, just remove it because after uh, you finish everything, uh, if you want to varnish, the, it's going to be difficult to varnish because those stray fibers will actually uh, become hardened like a needle. So. I just want to make a slight taper here, so I'm just gonna, and then just I cut it with a point of my hook. So I'll just remove this one strand. I mean, if you have it here or there, it's okay, but don't have too many of them. It's not gonna work. So. You can make a thicker body if you wish, but I think this one is more or less good. I like to reverse it and I like to do a slight bend because later when I apply super glue as a way to protect my fly, uh, the super glue won't soak so much into the tail, it will soak only into the body. And that's important. If you soak super glue into the tail, it's going actually to make it hard and it can actually break. So if you don't twist your thread enough, it's gonna flat, lay flat, which I don't like. So just twist it more. 
and this is why it's very important that you have nice smooth underbody because you can lay your uh, ribbing uh, very evenly in even spacings or any spacing you like if you want to increase the spacing as you advance forward that's also fine and it looks beautiful and just one wrap here to hold it and cut the excess it's a little bit more difficult to do it with bead you can't cut it very shortly so just one two finished now I will cut the excess now and I will attach bead uh, sorry I will uh, add some super glue so super glue 502 Chinese brand oops this is way too much but it's okay just remove it with my needle because it's translucent one I, I'm okay with that if it covers a little bit of bead it's also fine because it will actually make it harder uh, it won't come off the color won't come off and as you can see I have a couple of stray far fibers on the bottom of, of my fly which is not that bad because it's just a couple of them I will remove them later so I removed more or less all of it, all of the excess. I want those ribs to come uh, to, to become bumpy so they can become visual and so you can actually even touch them, feel them under your fingers. Now because this needs some time to dry, I'll just attach it onto the, this is my dubbing brush. I made it from balsa wood or something. It's, it's balsa, definitely, sorry. So, let me start the main point of the video. So, you can make any fly, dry, uh, nymph, wet, uh, but you should make a uh, proper thorax. Now, I will make first bad one. So, first mistake you can make is if you go with your thread too much behind, like this. This is already way too much. So if your thread is actually contrasting color to your body, which is not the case here, you can uh, you will you, you will want to cover it more. And then the second mistake is that you will use too much material. So I used this much. So I'll just go wrap and wrap and wrap and I want to cover everything and by covering it okay by covering it I covered half of my nymph. So instead of doing that, let's go backwards all the way to the start. Okay. Now, I'll remove the dubbing. Let's start it from the beginning. So make your each wrap count. So make every wrap very, very tight. This is GSP, so it's a little bit slippery. So that's why it's, I need more uh, more wraps to secure it on such a small space but when you do it it's okay now what I like to do actually I like to do I will show you two things now I don't have a script so I just record from my head so first of all you can just take just a small pinch and remember that less is actually more and this small pinch is maybe two times the size of a fly and just wrap it in the same exact spot and this is what you get and then when you do a web finish I will just uh, assume that this is a web finish this is what you get like the final touch would be this the second thing if you want it more spiky would be like this so I'll just remove the dubbing this time because I'm satisfied with what I did so to make a loop and this loop is quite a short one okay i need to i do it twice around the base and i go with my thread towards the bead now you want to attach your dubbing twister of course and in dubbing twister you attach just a little bit of dubbing so this would be too much this would be more than enough 
And this is like a small, small, tiny pinch. Cut it, put it in, and this is a just twister, dubbing twister. And help it a little bit. This is the reason why I like to use GSP because with GSP you can actually pull hard on it and it won't uh, break. And now just use this little dubbing to cover this place here like so and a couple of wraps around and you have finished fly here. Now what I usually do, I don't have orange, but red will do, I'll create a little hot spot here with red thread. Whip finish the fly and as you whip finish remember to pull stroke back all the fibers that you don't want to stick forward. And now you have nicely proportioned fly with nice hot spot here and you don't need more than this. And this is effective. Uh, if you have too much thorax, it will actually and body and materials all over your fly. It will actually slow down the sinking rate of your fly. This much uh, legs, let's call them legs, will will actually uh, represent those legs that nymph has. Uh, nymph has like six legs. That's it. It doesn't have 166 legs. So this is it. Now let's go to the fly that I tied at the beginning. Let's combine something else now. Now just attach it. It should be dry by now. Now my my finger is not there, so it's dry. Now for this one, I'll just do the proper. Uh, it's not dry inside. I can see super glue moving, but it's not a big deal now. So for this one, I'll show you thing with the uh, CDC and let's say some pico dubby. So again, make a loop and just attach it here. So there is a slight space between your bead and your loop and this is more, more or less enough. Uh, I'll just take dubbing twister and I'll hang it on the side while I prepare the rest of my materials. So you don't need the bottom part of your CDC. Just use this part here. This is more than enough. So you have, you can al almost count it. Just a couple of fibers. I'll attach them to the clip and near the edge of the clip. That's very important. Cut it near the stem. So near the stem, as you can see. So you have few of them sticking out. Now take just a tiny little bit of pico dubbing or any dubbing that you like actually. Purple is also fine, uh, black is fine, yellow is fine. Just do whatever you want. Attach it. And this even may be too much. Like, but I will leave it like this. So this is more or less max two centimeters. I'll actually remove couple of fibers here so now you can see it's double the length of the nymph again and then I will attach CDC like so I'll spin everything fast I'll make very tight dubbing rope so that the CDC fibers won't come out then just now you can see that there is a very tight dubbing rope here. I'll just try to pull one of these CDC fibers out. It does come out, but it needs some uh, force to do that. And then from the place you actually tied in the loop, go forward, don't go backwards. So you don't want to, go to make uh, too long thorax, just a small one. The peacock will give it a little bit of contrast and that's it. Okay, I like it this way. Now I'll just go with my thread around the loop. And that's it. More more than good. Okay. Now once more, 
I'll just go with my thread like this and always stroke back all the materials that are in your way so you will clear the head you won't trap any materials in the knot and you will make, make nice neat fly so this time you have a mixture of uh, peacock dubbing which in my opinion uh, represents a uh, wing case cover you have a couple of CTC legs it's more than plenty as you can see uh, it's more than enough uh, so you have nice little nymph that's like fusion between paradigm nymph and some uh, nymph that uses only natural materials so CTC will add some movement some bubbles will trap here maybe so it will represent a very lively insect under the water which will catch you many fish so guys uh, let me just do one more and this is it I'll use something that can be dry fly and wet fly at the same time so I'll just make a pupa now so as you can see I want it to be from here to more or less here and this is the place for the head the, so this is your head tip of my needle and from here to here it's your place for your thorax I'll do something similar to the previously done technique but with a natural CDC because I think natural CDC will uh, complement the colors of the fly okay so as you can see I picked up rather large CDC feather here I will remove those white ones because I don't like white feathers to here like barbules not feathers sorry so I'll just take half of that of this because I want this fly to be at the same time dry fly and wet fly uh, as soon as the body soaks in with water as soon as it saturates with water it will become mostly dry fly uh, sorry mostly wet fly because this is embroidery thread which is not buoyant at all so I have CDC put into the clip now I need thread for this fly and for this one I'll use just green thread it's again GSP uh, it's 18 zero because you can make number of turns without making any build up here now you can make it complicated you can add wing case cover now you can add whatever you want I will keep it simple so in my opinion that's not necessary so I'll just do two reps here and I'll go all the way to the place I want my thorax to start and which is here and then I'll go back with my thread up until the point where I want my head to be so between these two threads is your thorax don't go left don't go right or it's the opposite way I guess when you watch the video so I'll just take, I can use dubbing, uh, like peacock dubbing, or I can use squirrel dubbing, uh, which already has a little bit of CDC inside, and I'll pick uh, dubbing, squirrel dubbing now. So just, uh, 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 sorry, I need to use my <laughs> already stuck dubbing twister, and I'll just take a little bit by a little bit of dubbing this is already too much actually so just tiny little bits attach it to the thread you don't have to uh, dub it tightly just put it there to be on the thread without falling out so uh, because when you spin the thread it will actually do, do the job for you now insert the CDC as I did for the previously made fly and don't open the clip unless you are having those two threads together and when you open the clip never ever close it so when you remove the clip completely then you can close it because sometimes it happens that like you just close it here and then you pull out all the fibers and pisses me off so spin the dubbing twister okay now as you can see I have a th uh, dubbing thread that's like super nice and then let's go. So make first wrap very tight and then go up and back, up and back, up 
and back and so on and so on and just attach it if you need sometimes you can overlap those turns and that's it now let's go a couple of turns around the loop just to make it secure and that's it cut the excess now take your with finishing tool make nice neat head what you can do is you can actually brush the fly now as you can see the reason why I left enough room for the head is because I can make perfect head this way uh, so it will be easy to thread in the tippet material and now you have nice pupa uh, for the first uh, probably several minutes first cast until you catch first fish I'm not sure it depends on the f speed of water many other factors or how you cast actually if you smack it on the surface it will soak in the water more quickly if you know how to land your uh, fly uh, quietly and gently on the surface it will uh, be dry fly for the for longer period of time uh, but actually primarily this is wet fly which will fish just under the surface uh, CDC and the dubbing will actually trap a lot of air bubbles inside uh, it will look like real pupa that's uh, trying to transform uh, near the surface uh, I like to do this because sometimes this UV uh, that's mixed into my dubbing is stuck so I, I will just release it like this and it will look better and these hooks are sharp so this is it finished fly another one here and another one here so guys thank you very much for watching i hope you like this video i hope you find it useful uh happy new year and i wish you and your families all the best and a lot of health in the following years